I remember reading an old Chinese parable years ago, and I always was struck by it. It was a story of this Chinese farmer out in the country, <clears throat> and one day his horse ran away. And his friends and neighbors came when they heard, and they, they said, oh, it's so sad, so sad. And the farmer said, maybe, maybe not. Well, the next day, the horse came back. And with the horse came five or six wild horses. And friends and neighbors came and said, how wonderful, what a great gift. And the farmer said, good, bad, who knows? Well, the son wanted to tame one of the wild animals. And so he got on the horse's back. And the horse threw him, and he fell, and he broke his leg. And the friends and neighbors came and said, oh, so sad, so sad. And the farmer said, good, bad, who knows? The next day, the emperor sent his soldiers to round up recruits to forcibly bring them into the army. And when they came to the sun, he had a broken leg, so they didn't take him into the army. Good news, bad news, who knows? I mention that because we're hearing the story of ancient Israel. You know, we heard the story of Abraham and Sarah and how they left their native land, traveled over 2,000 miles and settled in Cana, and then how he had a son named Isaac, and then Joseph, or, or Jacob was born, and jo Jacob had 12 sons, and one of them, Joseph, was sold by his other brothers into slavery, down into Egypt. And when the famine hit, Joseph was the one who helped the Egyptians prepare for the famine. And so they stockpiled all the excess grain that they had gotten from the seven years previously. And so when his brothers came down to buy grain, Joseph finally revealed himself to them. And his family came down and settled and was spared the famine. Well, others took over later. and. They looked at these Hebrew people and they said, they're a threat to us, and so they enslaved them. And they even said, the Pharaoh commanded that all of the children, the boy children, should be thrown into the river Nile and drowned. And one was put in the water, but in a basket covered with tar. He didn't drown. And we heard part of that story today. We know that this child called Moses becomes the one who would rescue his sisters and brothers and lead them out of slavery into freedom. Good, bad, who knows? Who knows? Now, what I'm suggesting is, is that, you know, God is working in everything that happens in our life. And there are many times that we look at things and we consider it terrible, we consider it a disaster, we consider it this horrible loss. But maybe, maybe we need to see what God is going to do with that. You know, you and I, almost all of us have lost people that we've loved. And we see that as something terrible, and it is. And yet, we know that the Lord has great things prepared for them. And they receive that in all its fullness. And the pain and the suffering and the struggle of this world, that's no more. And they have the fullness of life. So many things happen in life, and we're ready to make that judgment that this is bad or this is good. You know, I bought a lotto ticket, and I won. Oh, good. Not. Not. I don't. I've never won, so it doesn't matter. But you know, one of the things that I've come to understand that I'd like to think that I would be really generous if I did, but you know, money changes people. And God has been good. That's never happened. You know, and in the end, my place with the Lord is probably more assured because of that. Good, bad, who knows? Only God, only God. 
We're invited to trust in the Lord. Jesus in the gospel condemns three cities, Capernaum, Chorazin, and Bethsaida. Three cities that were along the Sea of Galilee where Jesus had performed many miracles. And they saw all that. They saw wonderful things. They saw people who were cured of illnesses. They saw people who were raised from the dead, as in the case of the little girl we just heard about two weeks ago. And did they really open their hearts and minds to Jesus? No. No. Because they weren't open to what God is doing. The invitation of the scriptures today to us is to open our minds and hearts to the Lord and not tell God what we think as much as ask God to help us understand what it is that is happening in our lives, in the lives of those we love, and give us the grace to follow his will, no matter what that may be. In the end, my brothers and sisters, you know, we're tempted to say, this is good, this is bad. And do we really know? We don't have the perspective of God. But we can ask for that gift. We can ask to look at things and see things the way God does. And hopefully, by putting our trust in the Lord, to accept and to grow, and to become more like Christ. In the end, that's always the invitation. It's not for us to decide good or bad, but to be open to whatever it is that God calls us to in the midst of the changes that occur in 